Welcome back. Time to perform our brute force attacks. We're going to cover a couple of examples of brute force whether with burp suit or some other tool, but nonetheless the principle behind them is always the same. We want to use lists with bunch of usernames and passwords to try to guess credentials of a certain account. So this doesn't always work. Matter of fact, it usually won't work unless the target has a common username or a weak password. The first example that we will cover is going to be with our Burp Suit Intruder. We already saw a couple of examples of using Intruder, but right now we're going to take a look at a different approach to this attack. So first that we want to do is we want to navigate to this application that says OWASP Bricks. Click on that and it will lead us to this page. Under the Bricks tab we will have a sub tab that says Login Pages. Click on that and here we will have multiple login pages that we can practice on. Now for this example we're going to go with login number one and then if you want you can practice on the rest of the logins. The steps to performing this attack will be the same for each challenge right here. Okay, let's navigate to login one and we have a simple login form. If we type test and test, it will tell us wrong username or password. Okay. Let's intercept this request right here inside of our burp suit. And let's send it straight to the intruder. Here we can turn off the intercept right afterwards and let's navigate to our positions tab inside of our HTTP request. So down here we have our username and password field. Now before when we used intruder we used this attack type sniper and we only targeted one field. Right now we're going to target two fields at a time, the username field and the password field. So let's first clear all the other payloads and let's double click on username, click on add and double click on password and also click on add. Under the attack type we want to switch from sniper to cluster bomb and if you remember correctly the cluster bomb is the attack type where we can use multiple payload sets in order to perform the attack. In other words, we have multiple input fields that we want to brute force, the username and the password field. Now let's go to the payloads tab and it looks rather the same, just this time we have payload set 1 and we can also choose payload set 2. The first one is the username payload set and here we want to load a list that contains the usernames. Now in a real life scenario you would use a list much bigger than we use in our examples because for this attack we're going to use the HTTP default users again which is in our word list directory inside the Metasploit directory. This list only has like 14 common usernames but this is just to prove that the attack works. In reality you would use a much much bigger list. Once you select it right here click on payload set and select payload set number 2. Under the payload set number 2 we want to load HTTP default passwords. In other words it's called HTTP underscore default underscore pass dot txt. Double click on that and it will load 19 common passwords right here. If we just do this and we start the attack, as it says right here it will have a number of 266 combinations. So this will take a minute or two to finish, but as soon as we start we notice something strange. Every single request or every single response almost has a different length. So how are we going to determine which username and which password is correct? We need some other approach. So let's close this for just a second, we're going to stop this attack and let's go back to our page. Once we typed in the incorrect username and password, we got this message right here. So maybe we can use something like this to determine which username is incorrect and which password is incorrect. Let's go back to Burpsuit and if we navigate to Options tab right here, we're going to see this option that says grep equals match. These settings can be used to flag result items containing specified expressions. So let's clear this list and let's perhaps add this statement right here. So in other words what this means, let me just paste it first, 
that it will flag each result that contains this sentence in its response. In other words, it should flag every incorrect username and incorrect password combination that it tries. Let's run the attack again. So go back to payloads and start the attack. Now you can see each of these usernames and passwords combination is getting flagged except one of them. We got this admin and admin combination that didn't get flagged, which means that the sentence of wrong username or password isn't contained in its response. This most likely means that this is a correct username and correct password combination. As we can see, the rest of them are all flagged. And it's still going with this attack, but we can stop it since we already found the correct username and password. In reality, this attack would take much, much longer with much, much more combinations of usernames and passwords. And even at the end, you might not be able to find any correct combination. Nonetheless, let's give it a try to our correct combination to see whether it worked. And let's type admin and add submit. And it worked. We successfully logged in as it gave us right here. Now you can try this on other examples as well inside of this Bricks application. However, in the next video, we're going to take a look at a more useful tool for brute force attacks, which is called Hydra.